So this is number 14 from the 2012 AP Calculus exam. Known calculator multiple choice question here. They give us a function f of x, give us another function g of x. They ask us to find the derivative of f of g of x and evaluate it at 3. So before I found a derivative, I wanted to find f of g of x. So I, I wrote out f. I then placed 3x minus 2, g of x, in place of the x in f. So here is f of g of x. I rewrote the expression without a root, so that's a little more convenient for us to take the derivative of it. And that's exactly what I did here on the next line. So I took the derivative of this expression. I did notice I had an outer function, something to the 1 half power, and the inner function, everything inside that outer set of parentheses. So I had to use a chain rule, multiply by the exponent, subtract 1 from it, copy the same inner function into that derivative, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of this right here is going to require another chain rule because we have an inner function 3x minus 2 and an outer function something squared. So I, I did the derivative of the outside function, multiply by 2, subtract 1 from the power, copy that same inner function, 3x minus 2, into that derivative, and then I multiply by the derivative of this inside function to finish off my inner chain rule. So we're applying one chain rule within another chain rule here, and then I have to subtract off the derivative of 4. I then needed to evaluate this derivative at 3. So as I got ready to evaluate the derivative at 3, this negative exponent kind of caught my eye. So I moved this set of parentheses across the fraction bar into the denominator, changed the sign on the exponent to a positive, left the 2 down in the denominator with that new term that showed up with it, and then I just left all of this in the numerator. I did plug 3 in place of all of the x's. Right, so when I plug 3 here, I'm looking at 9 minus 2, then I have to square that, so 7 squared, and then I still have the minus 4 there, obviously. And then I plug this a 3 here as well, so 3 times 3, once again, is 9, minus the 2 is 7. So we see another instance of 7 popping up right there, and that comes from plugging 3 in place of these x's. Then needed to figure out how this answer right here matched up with one of the answer choices. So I did notice I had a 2 in the denominator, I had a 2 in the numerator, everything was multiplied here. So I went ahead and canceled those. If I multiply these together, I get 21 times the 1, 21 in the top of that fraction. And then here, I guess I'm looking at 49 minus 4, yeah, 45 in that denominator. And that's a 1 half power, so I can rewrite that as a root. So 21 over 45 is nicer than what we had over here, but still not one of the options. I didn't see a square root of 45 at all, so that kind of told me I'm going to have to try to simplify what's in that denominator. So if you break 45 up into 9 times 5, square root of 9 is 3, so you get something out of the root, and then the 5 is the only piece remaining underneath the root. Still not an option, but now if you look, 21 in the numerator, 3 outside the root in the denominator, I can divide this by 3, turn it into a 7, divide this by 3, turn it into a 1, and that is one of our options.